Father, we thank you, we glorify your holy name. We worship you, we adore you, Lord Father. We thank you for the opportunity given to us always to learn at your feet. Father, we thank you, Lord, for the throne of grace. We thank you for the boldness and the confidence that you give unto us to come into the throne, into your presence. We are always in your court. But to come directly before the throne and obtain grace, obtain favor, obtain mercy for a glorious life. Father, we thank you, Lord, for you said, as much as we have received the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness we reign. So, Father, we know we reign on this earth. But we reign according to that that we have assimilated to that building of for your word is able to build your word is able to build and give sanctification so father we just honor you our hearts and mind are open O oh lord always to hear from you to decipher to understand to analyze and to be glorified in your word so father lord jesus we honor you holy spirit we adore you In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen and amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. We are back again. Continuing from our brief exposition of the scripture. From Genesis to Revelation. And in the last video we are talking about the wanderings. And the review of the law. The wanderings in Numbers, the book of Numbers, and the review of the law in the book of Deuteronomy. But right now, we are now talking about their presence in the land. They are now before the land. So what happened? They are now to start to go through some warfare. So we are starting with in the land, starting with the book of Joshua. Because now, they have seen the land, they have seen everything, but they are about to enter. So, we are talking about in the land. And this very video is going to talk about, briefly, about the book of Joshua. And please remember, we are not doing it verse by verse. Because if we start that in the next 10 years, we will still continue doing verse by verse and analyzing analyzing and making exposition. We don't want to do that now. So we are doing a brief exposition. So what we are doing now is just a brief exposition of the book of Joshua. Okay, so in the land, starting with the book of Joshua. Now, the book of Joshua started with entering the land. Then, overcoming the land with various battles. With the battle of which the sun stood still. Then later, dividing the land. First of all, they saw the land. Later, they entered the land. And by entering the land, there are people already there. There are nations already there. So what happened? They have to overcome those nations by going on warfare. Various battles. And one of the battles is the sun actually stood still until they defeated all their enemies. Then later, the land was divided. So let's start with the entering the land. This can be seen from Joshua chapter 1, 1 to 5. Chapter 1 to chapter 5. In chapter 1, God encouraged Joshua. Because, remember, 
some time ago, 40 years ago. They saw the land, and they sent, Moses sent 12 spies. 10 out of the 12 saw wonderful, the land that is filled with milk and honey, but giants. And they were actually giants. But Joshua and Caleb said, we can defeat them. We can bring them down because God is with us. Of course, those people, none of them entered apart from their children 20 years down. So now, after 40 years, they're about to enter. That doesn't mean those giants were, uh, were still not there. So God had to encourage Joshua. We remember in Joshua 1.8 where he said, This book of the law should not depart out of your mouth. Meditate on it day and night so that it will make you prosperous and have good success. He now said, Be encouraged. Be encouraged. So the same thing. So in chapter 1, God encouraged Joshua so much. Then Joshua sent two spies. And these two spies came in contact with Rahab. They were spies to view how the land is. And they came into the shelter of Rahab. Of course, Rahab took care of them. And Rahab recognized who they were. Rahab was a prostitute. But of the godly kindness of her heart, she was forgiving. And, Re and she told them, please, don't forget. When you come later, don't forget me. Then later we talk about the, then the crossing the Jordan. And the Twelve Stones Memorial. Just as they crossed river, the Red Sea, the same thing happened by crossing the Jordan. God told them, when you get there, as long as your feet is on the, as long as the feet of the priests are in the water, the water will be divided. And truly, the water was divided. And what did Joshua do after they have crossed? He picked twelve stones to represent the 12 tribe of Israel. And I think this was what the same stones in terms of memoria, in terms of proverbial tenses, Jesus used when he said, even if you don't worship me, stones will be raised up to worship me. Praise the name of the Lord. Then of course, the children of Israel were circumcised at Gilgal. Why? Remember, throughout the period they were in the wilderness, they were not circumcised. And the manna also ceased. Then later, a visitor came to Joshua in the night, in the garden. And Joshua asked, pulled out his sword, are you with us or against us? And he said, I am the commander, the captain of the Lord host. The word captain is not like a soldier. No, what he's talking about, he is the head of the Lord host, which means it was God himself. And to prove that it was God himself, he told Joshua, the land that you are standing is also holy, so pull your shield. Remember, when God saw Moses in the wilderness, he told Moses, the land that you are marching is holy, so pull your shield. Praise the name. The same thing here, he said, the land that you are standing is holy, so pull your shield. Then, when we talk about the overcoming the land, this is in Joshua chapter 6 to chapter 12. This talks about the conquest of Jericho. We understood how it happened. When 
the captain of the Lord host, when God himself told Joshua, I will fight the battle for you. But there is a principle. There is a way to go. Your part is, the people will walk around the city six days, months, without saying anything, in silence. Then on the seventh day, they will walk around seven times. And in the last one, they will make a shout. And of course, without shout and trumpet, the war came down. That was the conquest of Jericho. Then there is a battle called the failure at I. We will look a little bit into it. Then another battle, the battle at Beth Horon. After that, the division of the land. Of course, we remember the night visitor who said he is the commander of the Lord host. Now the conquest of Jericho. Two spies were sent and they sheltered with Rahab. Remember we spoke about the prostitute Rahab. And Rahab hid them when they were looking for them. Then, remember we also spoke about the night visitor, the captain, the commander of the Lord host, who gave the battle plan to Joshua, and which is to march around the city once a day for six days. Then on the seventh day, to march seven times on the seventh day, then after that, to make a loud noise with trumpet, with music. And of course, what happened? The wall of Jericho fell down. And they were told not to take any spoil because all the things there were accursed things. Not to take anything alive or dead. Not to take anything just to destroy everything. Now, the battle of I, it was a failure. Because after the battle of Jericho, they became very confident in themselves. That yes, whatsoever they go, they can do it without looking at the will of God. Remember, we talk about the battle plan that God gave to Joshua in terms of Jericho. But in this case, they didn't bother to ask God. They underestimated their enemies. And by so doing, they sent only 3,000 warriors. That there would be no problem. Of course, the result was they were defeated and they lost about 36 warriors. You need to be sure. After this, it was something devastating, and they have to come back to God. They have to plead seriously. Joshua actually came back to God on his knees, begging and crying and asking why were they defeated. Because this became the only loss only battle that they lost in all the seven year campaign. Why? Because after this, they never made that error again. Then also, God informed, the Lord informed Joshua the error that they had. One, they were overconfident. Then two, one of the guys, one of the warriors, called Ashan, has smuggled a forbidden loot violating God's injunction. Remember, God told them they should not touch anything. This is what God told Joshua. Let's look at it. From Joshua 7, from verse 10, it says, And the Lord said unto Joshua, Get thee up, wherefore liest thou thus upon thy face? Because Joshua was pleading, lying on his face, humble before God. 
no matter how far you have gone, if you come back and humble before God, He will answer you. He is God of mercy. He says, if my people, if my people, if they turn around, if they repent, and they look up onto my face, and they turn away from their evil ways, and they pray, He, God, we answer them, and we bless them, and we heal their land. So the same thing here. So he was telling Joshua, Hey, Joshua, get up. Wherefore layest thou dust upon thy face? Israel hath sinned, and they have also transgressed my covenant which I commanded them. For they have even taken of the accursed thing, and have also stolen and dissembled also, and they have put it even among their own stuff. Therefore, the children of Israel could not stand before their enemies, but turned their backs before their enemies because they were accursed. Neither will I be with you anymore, except ye destroy their accursed from among you. You have to remove the one that has caused the problem from among you. Up, sanctify the people and say, sanctify yourself against tomorrow. For thus said the Lord God of Israel, there is an accosting in the midst of thee, O Israel. Thou canst not stand before thy enemies until ye take away the accosting from among you. Remember, so what happened? They have to look for him. They went immediately for who had done it. And he was stoned. The second attempt at I, before that, they have to stone Ashan and his family and destroy all his belongings. They have to stone and destroy all his belongings. Then a second attack was undertaken. This time, they didn't do it with confidence. They didn't just go, we know. No, they were now prepared. You have to be prepared all the time. Do what God says you should do. This time, 30,000 warriors with a 5,000-man ambush force were taken. And of course, what happened? They wiped out the city of Ai. Then the battle of Beth Horon. The kings, after seeing what is happening, they wiped out Jericho. Now they wiped out I, all the other kings. The Hittites, the men, the, name them all. They were flabbergasted. So what can they do? They now came together to form a confederate and under the king of Jerusalem called Adonai Zedek. But there was a king in Jerusalem then. He called himself the king of righteousness. So they now formed a confederate against the children of Israel, against Joshua. Of course, God told Joshua, don't, don't let that bother you because I have given them into your hands. They are already been defeated. And what happened? They were defeated with stones of fire from heaven. God knocked them all out with stones of fire from heaven. And even in the battle, the sun was commanded to stand still to give them more time to complete the total wipeout of the enemies. After that, all the kings, they ran into hiding. They ran into caves. Of course, they were located and defeated later. Praise the name of the Lord. Now, the division of the land. The tribes were allocated their portions by casting of lots. The tribe of Reuben, 
Gad and Manasseh were on the east side of the Jordan. Before they came in, they were, they've already got in their area, but they had to finish everything before they went back to their portions that was allocated to them. And the rest of the tribes were on the west side of the Jordan. All the area of the west side, all the cities, all the nations of the west side were given to them. The Levites were assigned to 48 cities. The Levites were not assigned as tribes a particular place, but they were given cities within the tribes. And six of these cities were designated cities of refuge. I'm not going deep into that. City of refuge is a place of safety. Six. No matter what happens to you, if you run into that place, nothing. Nobody can touch you. But I'm not going into that. Now, the book of Joshua can be seen to look in terms of contrasting to the book of Ephesians. For example, in Joshua, it talks about the entering and possessing the land. In Ephesians, we Christians, in Christ, we enter and we possess. We enter Christ, we enter the kingdom of God, and we possess the land. In Joshua, it talks about earthly inheritance. In Christianity, it talks about heavenly inheritance. In Joshua, it was given in Abraham. In Ephesians, it's given in Christ. Both of them, each opened by a divinely appointed leader. Joshua, in Christ Jesus. Remember, Joshua means Jesus. Jesus means Jesus. Joshua is Yeshua in Hebrew, which also means Jesus. Each is given by grace and received by faith. The children of Israel were given by grace. It's not because they walk it. It's not because they were so good. God just gave it to them. It's grace. And they believed it's by faith. Remember, Joshua and Caleb believed they can get it. Each has the sphere of striking divine revelations. It is always based on revelations. God has made it clear to them, this is what it will be according to his word. From Abraham. In Christ, we live by the divine revelation that this is what it will be in Christ. Each has the scene of warfare and conflict. Remember, Joshua went through one war, seven year warfare. In Christ, remember also, we are going through what they call, remember Ephesians 6 talks about the weapon of our warfare. So we are also in warfare. And they, de they defeated their enemies. We also defeated our enemies. Because they, our enemies has been defeated in Christ. Also, we can look at the book of Joshua versus the book of Revelation. The name Joshua, like I said, is the Hebrew name Yeshua, and which also means Jesus. And remember, in the book of Revelation, the revelation is about Jesus Christ. The book of Joshua is about the war that Jesus, I mean, Joshua felt word for the children of Israel. Revelation is about Jesus Christ and Christ and his people. Amen. In each is a military, military commander dispossessing his oppositors or suppers. Joshua disposited, counseled, eliminate all his enemies. All the enemies in the cities and in the nations. Jesus has already disposited and defeated all his enemies. They are going to be counseled and put in the lake of fire. 
both had seven year campaign which were in Joshua there was a seven year campaign there is a seven year campaign that is coming up with the antichrist and his fake false prophet one against seven of the original ten nations in Joshua in G- in Christ also they were original ten but they become seven strong ones according to the book of revelation in Joshua he sent two witnesses in Christ two witnesses will also be sent in revelation in Joshua there were seven trumpet sound events remember on the last day of the march around around Jericho they were told to march around seven times on the seventh marching round they should sound a trumpet seven trumpet sound events serious one and they should shout in revelation there is also a seven trumpet sound events and this preceded by silence remember the first six days they were told to march around without talking at all in silence and in revelation there is silence in heaven for half an hour in the book of there is a place that there is silence in heaven for half an hour before the seven trumpets were sounded in joshua confederated kings under their leader adonai zelek call lots of righteousness and in revelation the antichrist and the false prophets there was a confederation kings in Joshua and in Christ, in revelation there is the antichrist the woman of the beast the woman that ride the beast the false prophets also and they all just as Joshua defeated them also they were defeated in revelation they were both ultimately defeated with hailstones and fire from heaven there were signs of the reaction of the sun and moon remember in joshua the sun and the moon stood still until the battle was won the same thing in christ in revelation the, in this war the sun and the moon will be devastated in both cases the kings hide in caves rocks fall on all there's a statement that says rocks fall on us in the same thing in revelation in the next video we'll be going into the book of judges and root why we are combining both together is root happened to be in the period of judges so we are going to combine the book of judges and root together we will talk about the ultimate love affair in root then we'll talk about the book of judges praise the name of the lord oh father we thank you we glorify your holy name we worship you lord father we adore you we say thank you lord for giving us brief understanding of your word as we continue before we get to revelation we have a total understanding of what you want us to understand of who we are of why the word was written of the different dispensations so that we know all that you have done for us and the glorious life that we have in you glory 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 adoration be to your holy name in jesus mighty name we pray amen